Most, if not all of my videos focus on the principle of nutrient density. You would think the vitamin and mineral content of the diet is the most important thing, specifically vitamin content, but I can't convince people on a carnivore diet to consume organ meats, let alone the average person. In every indigenous group, we saw incredibly high amounts of foods that contained these fat soluble vitamins. The natural human diet has super high amounts of these that we don't see in modern diets, and it can attribute and explain a lot of the problems we have. So to loosely sum up why nutrients are so important is the vitamins I talk about, retinoic acid, the animal form of vitamin A, vitamin D3, regulate gene expression, which turns genes on and off and decides what cells your body makes. Obviously, it's important that cell proliferation and differentiation, the amount of cells you make and what cells you make, is the most important thing in the body. If regulating how your cells are made isn't the most important metabolic function, then I don't know what is. Hundreds of genes regulated by retinoic acid and D3. So the main four I'm going to focus on are retinoic acid, D3, K2, and omega-3, because those are the vitamins that I advocate consuming, and those are the vitamins that people are usually deficient in, you know, and other diets tend to actually have all of the other vitamins. Those aren't as much of a concern. Every bullet point I have here has a study that I linked in the description, so I apologize if I'm going to be brief, but my goal is to just, you guys have to understand this whole idea, every cell metabolism in the body, retinoic acid, vitamin D3, and then I just want to let you guys know how to actually get these vitamins and an easy way to do it. So retinoic acid, specific studies I have for this, it's shown to differentiate stem cells in human bodies as well as germ cell differentiation in embryonic development. We know vitamin A is very important. I mean, pigs that don't have enough vitamin A were born without eyes. Super important. And it regulates 500 plus genes in the body. Vitamin D3, it's shown to be beneficial in actual cancer therapy and cancer treatment. Bone homeostasis, we know vitamin D3 is needed for calcium to be absorbed in the kidneys. Uh, of course, vitamin D3 is a hormone. There are some hormone regulatory processes there. Fights autoimmune diseases, important for cardiovascular health, and again, cell proliferation, the creation of cells, and differentiation. If your body needs a white blood cell or a red blood cell, it helps regulate that. Vitamin K2, the animal form of vitamin K, is probably one of the vitamins we need the most in our diet because the calcium RDA is too high, and this helps uh, remove calcium from the bloodstream as well as uh, decalcify uh, the pilot. So. It's important for bone mineral density, overall cardiovascular health, and people that take vitamin K2 have increased cardiac output. Oh, I believe it was an, I believe it was an eight week study. Uh, omega-3, and the rest of these vitamins, guys, I don't really have to talk too much about. The three I'm trying to get people to consume and that people are skeptical about are these first three, but almost everyone agrees that omega-3 fatty acids are super beneficial for your health. Uh, you know, they vary in breast milk, especially important for developing babies, DHA, uh, fetal, weight management, cognition, all important for those things, reduce cardiac risk, uh, lower rates of heart disease, and improved blood flow are some of the many benefits of omega-3. B vitamins are literally involved in every single enzymatic process for cells in the body. Almost everyone benefits from supplementing vitamin B12, well, and all the B vitamins, and that says something about the lack of animal foods in our diet in general, that we could also attribute to a lot of these other things. So, uh, saying it's, it's kind of an argument against veganism, so to speak. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of arguments against it, but B vitamin deficiency, one of the most important vitamins in the human body in general that most people are deficient in even on a standard American diet. Definitely something to be said about that in regards to plant-based diets. Vitamin C, there's plenty of benefits that people know about vitamin C for fighting colds, but people don't realize every cell in your body needs to be regulated by retinoic acid and vitamin D3. That's why when I get sick, I'll eat a super high amount of liver or take vitamin D3, and I don't want to jinx myself, but I haven't been sick in about, I think, a year and a half now, and when I do get sick, it's just mild, cold-like symptoms, and then it passes very quickly. So uh, definitely something to be said about the importance of these vitamins in immune system health uh, as opposed to just vitamin C, but, you know, vitamin C, I have a study that has many, many things in it. Tissue healing, iron absorption, iron metabolism, fertility, uh, against atherosclerosis, cancer, diabetes, immunity maintenance of homeostasis, so many benefits, antioxidant properties. Same thing with vitamin E. They're both antioxidants, and uh, vitamin E, being a fat type of vitamin, is more involved in the integrity of cell membranes. Vitamin E, most people actually get too much of, and if you look up sources of vitamin E, 
they are mostly plant sources, and animal foods do contain them. Uh, it's just not really an issue. Vitamin C, I think most people get as well, and vitamin C is in certain carnivorous animal foods. Uh, minerals, I can't really touch on all the minerals, guys. It's too much to do in this video, but I can safely go over that all the minerals are obtained by just eating muscle meat and liver, potassium, selenium, phosphorus, iron, sodium, copper, manganese, choline. And one thing I wanted to touch on, which I will touch on further in my RDA video, is that calcium RDA is way too high. So if you want to understand why I'm not listing a thousand milligrams of calcium here, which is completely ridiculous, uh, check out that video. So hopefully those several hours of studies can kind of hammer home the importance of these vitamins. If not, just the presence of them in indigenous diets should be enough to say, hey, maybe I should at least try consuming these foods. And the nice thing is, if you get just retinoic acid, vitamin K2, and omega-3 in your diet, you will get all the vitamins because these foods that contain those three vitamins inherently have the other vitamins. Of course, D3 is from the sun, and D3 can be obtained from foods, but check out my uh, Look Like a Greek God video for any more information on D3. So let's say you want to get some retinoic acid and some vitamin A. The best source of retinoic acid is liver, and liver inherently has every single vitamin and mineral you need and a decent amount of omega-3, so shouldn't we just say, isn't that enough? Well, if the liver is low quality, it might not have a large amount of vitamin K2 and omega-3, so let's move on to K2. Let's say you want to have egg yolks or cheese for vitamin K2, some of the best sources of K2. So egg yolks have all the vitamins besides vitamin C and a decent amount of omega-3, so uh, so does cheese, and cheese even has vitamin C, so Frank, why would we need to go further than that? Well, hypothetically speaking, if you have really low quality liver and really low quality cheese and egg yolks, then maybe you might need some omega-3s, and then by eating high quality fish, uh, we knock out the omega-3s and any other vitamin concerns, and each of these foods individually can have all of these vitamins if they are high quality enough. What I mean by quality is the quality of the pasture, how the animal was raised, correlates directly to the vitamin content of the food and it varies between foods. I'll try to link to a German database where you can look up various foods. Uh, I, I have to do more videos focused on the actual nutrient content of certain foods, but you could achieve nutrient density by just eating oysters and egg yolks, by eating liver and salmon roe, by eating uh, brain tissue and liver, marrow. Basically what you have to do to achieve nutrient density is you have to eat a whole animal, whether it's a whole oyster a whole fish, including the organs, a whole ruminant, including the organs, uh, a whole egg. If you consume a whole animal, you will get a balanced fat-soluble vitamin profile. Uh, one thing we didn't really touch on is the plant form of vitamins versus the animal form. Uh, in order to get any of these vitamins in high enough amounts warranted in indigenous diets, you need to consume the animal form. That's one argument for it. The other argument for it is uh, carotenoids have a very low conversion rate to retinoic acid, and this being one of the most important vitamins... We should be on the safe side and get more. Uh, vitamin D3, you need cholesterol, fat, and various other animal vitamins to metabolize vitamin D3 in the blood. Vitamin K2 is only found in animal foods or natto fermented soybean. Uh, that's a very specific argument, but no one eats natto for the most part. So we got to get this from fermented foods like cheese or egg yolks or, I mean, vitamin K2 is also in liver and animal foods uh, outside of fermented foods. Omega-3 fatty acids. DHA, you know, we know we can't really get it from plant foods. You want to drink two cups of flaxseed oil? Go ahead. I'll live with you in your bathroom while you're on the toilet all day. Uh, the B vitamins, I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory. They're in every animal food we eat. Uh, you know, you can't really get them from plant foods. You know, people on vegan diets supplement B12. They say they're getting all the B vitamins from plant foods, yet they're still deficient. Uh, vitamin C and vitamin E, they can be obtained in both plant and animal form. The nice thing is foods like salmon raw, egg yolks, liver have complete nutrient profiles and there's adequate enough of these to get in your diet to reach the RDA. And same thing with minerals. Uh, if you just eat muscle meat, you will hit your potassium, selenium, phosphorus, iron, and sodium RDAs. And to hit your copper, manganese, and choline RDAs, you just have to incorporate liver. So uh, I think I've kind of covered the basis of information and kind of given you guys a good starting point to research. Whether you want to go more specifically into the functions of each of these vitamins, whether you want to try to find out what the vitamin composition of certain foods is, uh, I definitely want to work on getting some nutrient testing done, getting some high quality animal foods to really get concrete data because we know these foods have these vitamins, but I'm curious, do, do egg yolks at the highest quality also have vitamin C? You know, 
Uh, does fish roe have higher amounts of K2 than we thought? There's definitely some more nutrient testing that has to be done. But outside of that, if you guys would like to support me, please just share the video. If you guys would like to check out my Patreon for discounted diet stuff, and I also have an Amazon shop with some of my products that I buy. I'm surprised you guys kind of jumped on that real quick. <laughs> I should have done it sooner. Uh, and then outside of that, if you guys want to contact me for one-on-one, -on -one, uh, shoot me an email, frankatufano at gmail.com. And let me know if you guys would like to see any videos, anything pertaining to this, uh, to add to my list and maybe put it as a top priority. Uh, one thing I just wanted to throw in, guys, cod liver is an excellent source of all the vitamins I just mentioned. Cod liver oil will get your vitamin A, your vitamin D3, your vitamin K2, omega-3 fats. Just by consuming cod liver, you literally would not have to take any other foods or try to supplement any sort of vitamins through foods in your diet.